Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, today, I'm going to wrap up the Australian 2013-14 cropping season and give you a rundown of the outlook for the coming winter crop before talking about some of the major issues that ABES thinks will be important to Australian and world markets over the next five years. ABES estimates that Australia's winter crop in 2013-14 was the second largest on record, reaching 44 million tonnes. While this was a fantastic result overall, there were some significant variations in production across the main cropping regions, as Richard's already mentioned. In Western Australia and South Australia, we saw excellent harvest results this season following, in, following favourable in-crop rainfall. Again, while these state results were excellent on the whole, there were significant areas that didn't fare so well. That's most notably the eastern wheat belt of WA. In southern New South Wales and Victoria, we saw uh, reasonable growing conditions throughout the season, but low spring rainfall and frost in October meant a hard finish for many winter crops. Despite this, overall winter crop production in 2013-14 is expected to be similar to the results achieved in 2012-13. In northern New South Wales and Queensland, prospects were poor before sowing, and little to no rain over the growing season meant it was a tough year for most growers. Unfortunately, it's those last two regions I mentioned that are the main summer cropping regions for Australia. The lack of spring rainfall in northern New South Wales and central and southern Queensland has meant that there was a significant reduction in summer plantings this season, particularly for sorghum. Um, as a result, ABERS is forecasting that total summer crop production will fall by 25% to 4 million tonnes. A small winter crop and the prospect of a relatively small summer crop has meant that feed prices have risen strongly over the past couple of months. For example, the price of sorghum has risen by $50 since Christmas to reach around $360 a tonne last week. This has pulled up feed grain prices along the East Coast, so growers who still have, a, stu, pardon me, who still have grain on hand can take advantage of the favourable prices. Now, it shouldn't be surprising for me to tell you that the farm cash income results that ABES is projecting for the 2013-14 season uh, have followed the fortunes of the season. Average farm cash incomes for all grains farms, and that includes cropping specialist and mixed crop livestock enterprises, are forecast to rise by 10% to $224,000. This rise is largely driven by higher cash incomes in Western Australia and South Australia, which are expected to reach record highs. Partially offsetting this are much lower farm cash incomes in northern New South Wales and Queensland. Although not shown here, cash incomes for Victoria and southern New South Wales grains farms are expected to fall somewhat from last season, but remain relatively high in historical terms. Following a mixed bag of results this season, the outlook for winter crops in 2014-15 looks pretty similar to where we were 12 months ago. The map that should be on the screen now uh, shows soil moisture levels across the sheep wheat belt at the end of January. The darker the green on, on the map, the wetter the soil, while the darker the brown, the drier. And as you can see, the main growing areas on the east and west coasts are predominantly brown. Now, in the past couple of weeks, we have had some good rainfall across southern, New South, southern WA, South Australia, Victoria and southern New South Wales. And in those currently dry areas, this rain will certainly improve upper layer soil moisture, which will help in the initial growth stages after planting. But for lower layer soil moisture, which is important for latter, the latter stages of crop development, these rains are less likely to have a big impact. Because of this, we're expecting that plantings in the coming season will favour barley and wheat over canola, which is less tolerant to dry conditions. Dry soils also mean that in-crop rainfall will be important for the coming season. While relying on in-crop rainfall isn't necessarily a bad thing, it can certainly, it's certainly a risk to crop development and could lead to significant variations in production, as we've seen this season. Turning to the outlook for the world in 2014-15, we're expecting another season of relatively high production. Wheat and oilseeds production is forecast to remain largely unchanged from last season, while coarse grains are expected to be down slightly. Uh, following the 2013-14 season, where historically high yields were achieved in the European Union, Canada and the Black Sea region, 
We're expecting yields to come back to their longer term averages. However, these declines in production are expected to be offset by improved conditions in Latin America, particularly Brazil, and the US, uh, particularly for wheat, following dry conditions last season. In the coming year, we're also expecting a pickup in consumption, particularly for coarse grains and oilseeds. Despite this rise in consumption, though, we are still expecting world stocks to remain relatively high, which will push world prices lower. The largest price declines will be for oilseeds and wheat, which are forecast to decline by 5 and 7% respectively. For corn, prices are expected to fall only marginally, because strong consumption growth and a decline in production will start to reduce record world stocks. Despite these forecast declines, world prices will still be favourable when compared to historical averages. With the outlook for the coming season out of the way, I'd just like to mention some of the issues that we think will be important to Australian growers over the next five years. As Karen mentioned in this morning's opening session, ABES is assuming that world economic growth will strengthen over the next few years. This is expected to translate into a pickup in income growth and drive an increase in meat consumption. As a result, demand for grains and oilseeds for livestock feed, particularly soybeans and corn, is also expected to rise. This increase in consumption is forecast to put upward pressure on prices for coarse grains and oilseeds until 2017-18, when we expect producers to respond to the relatively high prices by increasing production. For wheat, prices are expected to remain relatively unchanged over the outlook period. With steady demand growth, we're expecting the expansion of global wheat area to be slower than that of coarse grains and oilseeds, meaning that yield improvements will be the main driver of higher wheat production. As I just mentioned, the main driver of rising prices is higher demand for coarse grains and oilseeds, which will be increasingly used for livestock feed and cooking oil. As Jamie mentioned this morning, Chinese demand for these commodities is expected to be the major contributor to world consumption growth, but China's not alone. Other growing economies in Asia and in emerging uh, Africa will also contribute to an increase in world grains and oils consumption. And just to demonstrate the scale of consumption growth we're talking about, I'd like to take a look at India. India is currently the world's second largest grower of wheat, but it has a significant production surplus which has resulted in, a, um, in, stock, in stocks reaching more than 40 million tonnes after the most recent harvest. Now, generally, a surplus of this size would suggest that some structural adjustment to the industry is on its way, but consumption is expected to grow so rapidly over the next five years that by the end of the projection period, that production surplus is expected to all but disappear. So now I've suggested that the world needs more grains and that prices um, will encourage greater production. The remaining piece of the puzzle is where are those crops going to come from? And in terms of corn and soybeans, the largest increase in supply will come from Latin America, particularly through an expansion of area in Brazil and yield improvements. Yield improvements will also make a strong contribution to production growth in the US, um, the world's reigning soybean and corn producer. Uh, we're very lucky to have Joe here from the US Department of Agriculture. So I'm looking forward to hearing his thoughts on the outlook for world production from an American perspective next. But what I'd like to spend some time on is the development of the Black Sea region. And just so we're on the same page, I'm talking about the Russian Federation, Ukraine and Kazakhstan. Now, despite the current political turmoil, there is significant potential for this region to increase grains and oilseeds production over the next five years and beyond. The greatest potential is in the Russian Federation and Ukraine, where area and yield improvements can be made. But to achieve this, the region requires large amounts of capital to improve farm and transport infrastructure. Even with this hurdle, ABES is projecting that grains and oilseeds production uh, in the region will reach 200 million tonnes by 2018-19, which is 10% higher than 2013-14. This rise in production is projected to result in exports reaching almost 80 million tonnes over the same period, which is 20% higher than 2013-14 with a larger proportion of the region's production being exported, it is likely that there will be an increasing focus on improving quality and consistency of grains supplied to the world market, which has been a criticism of Black Sea region exports in the past. With relatively low production costs and improving quality, 
grains and oilseeds from the Black Sea are expected to become increasingly attractive to world buyers over the medium term. As a result, Australian exports, particularly of wheat, can expect to face greater competition for cargoes to our major export markets in Asia. Moving on to the outlook for Australia, we expect grains and oilseeds production to rise by an average of around 1% a year to reach 46 million tonnes by 2018-19. As you can see, we're not expecting any major change in total planted area over the medium term. But while total area is unchanged, canola area is expected to increase at the expense of barley because of more favourable returns to growers. With little scope for an expansion of cropping area and more competition in world markets, productivity growth will be key to maintaining improving farm gate returns for Australian growers over the medium term. Now, if you've ever been to an Outlook conference before, or even the previous session, you've seen a graph like this. As you can see, Australia's productivity growth in cropping has slipped to just 1% a year over the past decade. To remain globally competitive, the grains industry will need to find new sources of growth. So I'm pleased we have Murray here to talk about the innovations at his property and how they've improved his bottom line. For its part, ABES is doing some interesting work on infrastructure, uh, with particular attention being paid to grains transport. And we're also talking to industry participants about regulatory impediments and how they may be reduced. Before I finish, I'd just like to thank uh, our survey cooperators who make much of the work uh, done by ABES possible, and also Richard and the GRDC for their continuing support for this event. Thank you.